Hello, Miguel. Um, firstly, uh, and I know I say this with all my videos, but every time I say it, it's totally true. I'm extraordinarily grateful for your patience and how long it has taken for your job to be at the front of the line. But it is here. Your long wait is over. So, uh, the first of the three watches that I have uh, that I'm going to work on is this Yachtman. Uh, and in part, I'm doing that because this one is so nice. Uh, it's clearly a runner. It's original loom. It's the original case and bracelet and everything. Uh, bracelet is nice and tight, actually. Usually, these tend to get a fair amount of stretch on them. It's unusual to see one this this tight. So that's that's nice. It's a good watch. Case back is original, hasn't been polished. Under the plastic, you can see the race edges, the letters and numbers. It's a good watch. Uh, somebody did retouch the brushing at one point, but very very minor. Um, and the the actual original case finishes are still absolutely in place. Like if you look at the fine machining lines here on these between these lugs, that's that's original. So it's pretty clean externally, but it's all still gonna come apart. Every last bit of it. So we, gotta, we gotta start somewhere. So look at that. Three and a half years. This job has been sitting here and you've been patient. There, it finally begins. Stop that. Stop it. Okay. Bracelet. Spring bars. These are the, even these are the original standard type Seiko ones. This watch has been around for a long time. Yeah, no one ever, no one ever polished that case back. You can see the little circular lines around this, the little waviness. That's nice. So clean. I mean, you're... The crystal might have been cleaned up a little bit. It's got some marks on it. I'll have to see it. Uh, yeah, this one is relatively speaking. It's so low miles. It still has the eggshell finish to the insert. That tends to, those tend to go away pretty quickly. Hmm. Nice watch. Okay. <laughs> Slightly read to this side, but. Not much else. Mm -hmm. Click, click, click. Okay. Yeah, look at the beautiful loom. Beautiful dial loom. It's a nice watch. Yeah, I mean, look at the buttons. Look at the surface on the buttons. The crown looks like it's brand new. Yeah, this one doesn't doesn't have a lot of miles. <clears throat> Well, nothing like the present, because it's the only time we have to get anything done, is now. Let's see. Oh, right. New Rotico. Yeah. This is the, this is the new gray kind. Woo, wow, it's super sticky. Wow, nutty. Okay. Cool. This is supposedly the premium new and improved. Wow, it's super sticky. Is it supposed to be this sticky? 
softer too. The green stuff, it tends to be really hard and not this gummy. Hmm. I'm looking forward to trying it. Wow, it's super good and it's so much. Okay, I don't know what Bergeon is thinking. That's kind of weird. Hmm. Okay. Thankfully, until I understand what the problem is, uh, I have old school Rotico as well, until I figure out if this stuff is good or bad. The hell? That's the strangest darn thing I ever did see. Man, why are you so sticky? You're gonna pull the paint right off of stuff. Jeez, oh Pete. Look at that. It won't it won't it won't come off. This is the new and improved Rotoco? What's improved about it? This stuff is supposed to stick only to itself. That's weird. Okay. Off that comes. See, new is not always better. Of course, maybe I just don't understand what the specific application of this material is for. See, look, old rotocol, rotocol, pull the new stuff right off. Okay, let's stop messing around. Ancient seals. <laughs> yep. Hard as rock. So yeah, I had to use a nail clipper on this. And it's just, it, they just, they just shatter. All the volatiles are gone, and it's just crap. Thankfully, though, this watch never was asked to go into the water with old seals. Listen, did you hear that crack? Premium Rotico. I don't get it. Maybe I just don't understand, and I need to figure that out. They wouldn't sell the stuff if it didn't work. I must not be fully plugged in. Okay, buttons are out. Same deal. See, look, the crown looks like it's Brand new, right? Brand new. But yet the seal, gasket, is ancient. Hard as anything. There's no way you could get that seal on that crown. That tells us this seal is original, which means that the crown is original, which means that finish is original. Rare to see one like that. I don't think whoever owned this word a whole lot. Again, it's like plastic. No servicing marks. 
doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it doesn't look to me like anybody ever was in here. Oh, right. Uh, sorry for the screaming. <clears throat> if you hear that. School hasn't quite started yet, but very soon. But until then, the two girls are doing their usual battle royale. that. Jeez, that's clean. That's the ghost of old lubrication. But look, there's no wear or polishing here. God, it's like someone didn't even wear this thing. Yeah, look at the high shine in the die fix. That's wild. original you can just see the haze on the bridge right there the ghost of lubrication past that's what's left of it ah this is nice okay make sure you guys have this in view always always to be careful with those die fix springs, die shock springs. beautiful oh it's so beautiful whenever i see because this is one of those models that that the sun can make take issue with especially the orange on these hands will fade i wish i had some kind of uv protector and clear coat I could put clear coat over this orange and it would never fade
Where is it? Oh, it's over there. Put it back where it was supposed to go. No wonder I can't find it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Original. You can tell by how much that did not want to come off. So hard now what it <sighs> okay. These are always fun to do. It's a particular method that I use uh, was taught to me by my old Swiss dude. Swiss, Swiss, Swiss. Yeah. Uh, I think, um, yeah, and I think actually that he specifically showed me this one. He was taking a, an Omega Speedmaster apart. And I was like, really? And he's like, oh yeah, that's the way you do it. And I was like, you're kidding me. He said, nope, that's how you do it. And I'm like, okay. We got some static electricity going on. But you get your double protection. You go in with your double protection. Very carefully. Come in under it. One. And there's two. I uh, always want to make sure these little hands don't have uh, static on them and sticking them to the plastic. Many years ago I was doing this and uh, it was for, it was, I forget which one it was, but I pulled this thing off and I was doing other stuff and I realized that the hand was missing and that it was stuck to this thing and I never did find that hand again. I never did. It, it, I don't know where it went but I never found it. Never again. There. What a beautiful dial, cheese. Four seven. Well, that's not what I want to do. 
that. I do not want the hand on top of that thing. Get off of there. Please. That does not go on there. There we go. You got your dial. On my handy dandy Bergeon diddly. So there we are. So let us begin in earnest. Uh, right now, beyond the lubrication hazing, I don't really see much of anything, but, you know, I'm only just getting into it. since it's not dirty or super worn. Uh, yeah, look at that. Look at this, the side of the mainspring barrel. Look at the shine on it. Yeah, I think someone got this as a present or bought it and then they just never wore it. again look at that yeah no deformation at all around that upper bushing for the minute counter wheel if they got reset a lot they'll get bunked out of the side that one's i've seen a lot of these in really nice condition recently it's strange intermediary minute counter wheel minute counter wheel one have Super Rotico that's so my Super Rotico is made by Bergeon my finger cots are made by Bergeon you would think a product two products made by the same company would work together I'm still very confused about this whole thing it seems like crazy sticky a lot softer very curious well, let's try it just for fun. Got a lot of lubrication haze right here on this ratchet wheel. It's just sitting there. It's not moving. Okay, and let's compare that to old normal Rotico. <laughs> Look at that. See, normal Rotico does the job. Super Soft Rota Coat doesn't. I wonder if the Super Soft Rota Coat is like for hands or something? It's it's such a different formulation. And it doesn't really pull that haze off in the same way. Maybe I need to learn how to use it properly. Okay. Stop wasting your time. Get this thing apart. Hey, that one was loose. First sign of something not being quite correct. That screw was loose. Hmm. That 
that's good. That one was also kind of loose. Hmm. Interesting. Look at that, it looks like it's gun blued. Sometimes you see this, I don't have a whole lot of explanation for it, but... Shit, this looks like it's new, it's just wild. Uh, ghost of lubrication there. Try it again. New lube. See how this old gross lube down there? I guess it cleans up a little bit. Hmm. I just don't like not understanding something or feeling like I don't understand something. Yeah, look at that. What, what's all that oil? All this stuff. Yeah, look at all the oil on this main plate. The hell's up with that? And look, that one is wet with oil. Okay, new Rotico, time to earn your keep. Yeah. Okay, like, this is a really oily part. And this new Rotoco just sticks right to it. I got it to clean off, but using this, I don't know. In any case, let's uh, get that over there. I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, let's let's just drop the most important part of this watch. I think that's just fine. Yep. Okay. Got to be one more. He was delicious. should not be using a set of delicate tweezers that were designed for a hairspring rather than something a little more robust. And that lower jewel. Yeah, look at that. I mean, look at this thing. Looks like it just came out of a parts packet. That's bizarre. 
Let's open it up and see what we find. Ooh, doesn't want to open here. Another good sign. Ah, there we go. I mean, it might not look, but but the fact that the 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 the, the the S2 lubricant that's in here, see how even it is? It's sort of this light silverish gray, it's not contaminated. It's not often you really, it's not often you come across uh, vintage Seiko in this kind of condition. That should be black where I was rolling this thing over. There should be like just unbelievable amounts of filth on this thing. But no, it looks pretty clean. Let's get a little uh, closer for here. usual when I flip these over with the plates off um, I like to use the movement holder ring the movement ring because it holds the movement nice and securely I'm just looking to see if anything is nope I don't see anything doing anything funky did I drop one of those things? where the heck did it go? oh it's over there Okay. Yeah, you see that's the problem is you have little teeny tiny fine points like this and they tend to the tips will deform if you if you use them too hard because they're designed for a hairspring and then things will go kapunk. But I like them because it just limits my interaction. Gosh, yeah. Perfectly flat. out. So that was the date driving assembly gone. 
here is the there's the heart wheel heart cam for the 12 hour counter it snaps to oops, snaps to zero and that is the adjuster for the spring for the stop lever and that is supposed to be pointing right towards this shaft those two things need to line up because this is an eccentric and it changes the screw pressure the, the spring pressure I don't know why they put an adjustment on it if it's supposed to always be that way but they did for whatever reason These three big screws with the nice arched dome on it, brushed surface there. Only for these and some of the 6200s. Uh, oh, and the Belmatics too. Yeah, usual hazel oil. Hand clean that off. And there you go. There is the top of the core watch. This is, in a way, it's sort of like a module, kind of, but not really. There's that spring with the eccentric. Oh, Spencer, dingle fart. Mm-hmm. That feels good. Good. I just had to test your can opinion before I took that apart. Yeah, isn't that interesting? It's always fun to see one of these that has apparently never been pulled open because you can see how Seiko did lubrication. That's this gray stuff, that's S4. Interestingly, it's not like a, a regular medium lubrication. <clears throat> really? That. Oh, okay, good. Thank, thank you. That's, that's great. interesting thing is that the service manuals don't say anything about using any other kind of lubrication but that here hmm, I wonder about it I've seen it more than a few times Let's, come on there's that handy dandy spring and there's this interlocking lever stops the uh, stops the 12 hour counter or helps start stop the 12 hour counter when the chronograph is stopped if you have a 6138 and the top register keeps totaling time even if it's stopped that is it's either problem is either going to be there or it's going to be in the top of this right here this little sliding ratchet will not be sliding Again with the Klingons. I see you. There you are.
Okay, these this one has a some fairly tight springs in it, so I like to disassemble these. I want to be right on top of it when I do that, so nothing goes kapoink. Uh, so I'm going to do that here in now. Guard. Now, you can, if you're feeling fancy, you could just loosen this and leave it there. Uh, and it, it, But it seems like a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at that. Look, there's some old thick gold lubrication under there in the keyless works. It was a little loose. That one was fine. Mm -hmm. Goes to lubrication past. And yet they didn't use they didn't use S4 in the keyless works. They used it here but not here. I'm Pitch confused. This is the killer. That baby right there. It's a little helper thing for the spring. Keep enough pressure to get the sections of the winding pinion and the setting pinion to, uh, in, together, which you can see right here. There's that. There's that. Come on. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Four. That is a part. All it really needs to be done now. And when running these things through the cleaner balance and stuff, you put it on the main plate because it's the safest place for it. It keeps it in the exact orientation and everything and nothing can really bonk it. And It's really, it's the only way to do it. You can see the metal shine even through the lubrication. Crazy stuff. And yeah. Here's your main spring. I need to clean that up. And I'll clean these up and I need to hand clean these. And then we'll get going. So that's the end of disassembly. Uh, that is the whole watch in pieces as far as I take it. There are more things I could pull apart, but there's kind of no point. Uh, things like this, it doesn't move. It's got nothing going on there. I'm going to hand clean all this, and then that's it. And then uh, we'll put it back together. That's it for now. And we are back. Looking shiny. Looking clean.
cool. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this now, <clears throat> I can show the full disassembly. That's that's not too taxing. Assembly, I uh, I'm gonna. There's a lot of little things I'm gonna want to do and be right on top of it to make sure it's correct. Keyless works, uh, jewels, die shock settings. Basically, when I get to that point that I'm ready to like kind of drop the wheels and do stuff, then I'm going to then I'll start filming at that point. I don't. Uh, the only other thing is if I run into anything weird reassembling, I will let you know. But I don't imagine I'd find anything like that, but who knows. Okay, so you are going to see this when we come back. All of this stuff basically bolted together, and we are going to go from there. I'm making a video, Sebastian, so don't, don't say anything. Good morning. Let's see where we're at. So I completely got lost in the moment of building the movement and I just swung on. It was just so pleasant. And then it was the end of the day and I don't know, here we are. Hmm, good. Isn't that nice? Excellent. That's great. Cool. Okay, all right, well, then let's push ahead. Well, that's sort of anticlimactic, isn't it? I knew that the, uh, I don't know, it, I just knew that it was going to be just sweet. And it didn't require anything, really, except seals and a full cleaning and all that stuff. So you'll notice that that reset was a little slow. That was by design. These, I, I have determined over time that in my opinion, the danger to, people always ask, should I leave the chronograph running or stopped? Many, for a long time now, I've decided that that's actually the wrong question. If it's running or if it's stopped, that should be okay. The problem is when you when you get a hard reset. So if you stopped it with the hand all the way down here and did a hard reset, um, because the hardness of the reset can be adjusted, if it's too hard, you'll put a ton of force into the reset here and it can damage the, the, the hand tube on this orange hand. It can damage the chronograph wheel. Um, if the minute wheel, minute hand is over in between, basically, if the minute hand is in between the sweep hand and the top, if it's a hard enough reset, the, this hand tip can flex as it's resetting, and it can hit the minute hand, the tip. If you look online at pictures of unrestored 6138s, you'll see a lot of them have chips on the minute hand, and, and that's what that's from. The, the Seiko system is cool, but it doesn't, it's not set up to protect the movement. There's no safety cutout between the force applied here and the, the force that comes in here. In fact, they have a force multiplier set up, which is they have a, a click spring that holds it back until the amount of force being applied tips over, then all that force plus the, the leverage from the levers inside all that force goes boop, right into this. And that's where the damage, I believe, comes from. The difference between that and, a, say, a Swiss system, Swiss system is you click the click, and the click moves a cam, and the cam goes clunk, and it, 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 it sets off a series of levers with their springs, and that, that is at a preset power level, if you want to look at it that way. And so, for that reason, Swiss chronos don't get that kind of damage. So if you're gonna, so as a result, I set the reset on this light, and I always do that. I, I can make it a little stiffer, but you know, it's just a visual thing, and functionally it does so much good to protect the watch. So I stop it there, and there it is. And that protects everything. So my recommendation is running or stopped, is your choice, but when you do your resets, be careful with them. 
it's not like these things are just going to like burst into flame or something. It's just, it's a minor step in order to protect a very important part. What a great watch. It's amazing too to feel how tight and strong this bracelet is. You don't really get a sense for how worn these often are until you see one like this. What a watch. I seriously think it's one of Sato, Seiko's greatest styles. Why people don't talk about these being... I don't know. Well, it's not... Uh, I don't know. It's just it's such a pretty, pretty watch. And when you see them like this, you know... It's just a different experience than seeing them when they're really worn. Anyway, that's it. Okay, thank you very, very much. And that's all.